Well, hello everybody and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Peter Draculic and in this video tutorial I'm gonna be showing how you can create this simple vintage logo over here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I want to uh, create a new document in Inkscape. So default, new document, alright, I'm maximizing this one. So, this is the default new document, and you can see here uh, in the middle are my empty canvas or my empty page of my document. So, I want to first head over to the file menu over here and I want to go to the document properties. So, click on that, and now I want to set the width and height for my for the size, all right, of my. Uh, canvas into something like 900 by 900 pixels. Now, as you can see, if I click Enter and I'm uh, closing this window, you can see we have a rectangular shape here. And if you press 5 on numpad, you can zoom uh, to the page. Now, I want to create a custom grid here. All right, that's very important because I can use the grid for snapping purposes. So I go once more to the document properties, bring this window back and I want to head over to the grids tab here and I want to add a new rectangular grid. As you can see, my grid is quite dense, so I need to change the spacing for the X and Y axis to something like 300 for the uh, x-axis and 300 for the y-axis. Now, if I close the window, you can see I have this very uh, nice grid that splits, that divides the page into thirds. Alright, next thing I want to do is to start creating my, my logo by adding a star shape. So I'm heading over to the, to the, the, the shape tools uh, panel here and I click on the Create Stars and Polygons tool and I, I'm making sure this is set to, to, to the star so by holding down control I'm clicking and I'm creating an upright star, something like so. Alright, now I want to align the star to the page. So I'm clicking control shift a this is the shortcut to bring up the alignment uh, panel here, the align and distribute panel. So, and I'm clicking uh, on this uh, button here, but before that, I need to go over here to the drop list and I want to select align my shape to the page, relative to page. Alright, so now I'm clicking on this vertical axis and horizontal axis, you know, buttons. So I have aligned my star. Next thing I want to modify my star and make it looking like a gear. So for this purpose I'm going over here to the toolbar for this shape, this horizontal toolbar and I'm setting the number of corners to something like 20, let's say 20, and the spoke ratio to something like 0 0.8 maybe. Okay, and now I need to round, to round up a little bit the corners here, so that's why I'm setting the rounded uh, value here in this slider to something like uh, 0 0.5 maybe. So now, as you can see, I have this uh, nice gear shape. Okay, now I want to scale it up a little bit and I want for this shape to, to, to snap to the, to the border of my page. That's why I'm selecting my Select and Transform Objects tool over here, this arrow here. And I want to go over here to the Snap toolbar. You can see this on the far right. And I want to enable the snapping by clicking on this button. I want to enable then the Snap Bounded Box Corners button, this one. And I want also to enable the Snap to the Page Border button, this page icon over here. So now, maybe I need first to re-center, to realign my shape by clicking on those two buttons over here. So I'm 100% sure it is centered at the center of the, of the page. And then I'm clicking on those little double-headed arrows 
by holding down Ctrl and Shift. And now as you can see, when it snaps, the shape snaps, you can see that, to the borders of the, of the page, I'm uh, releasing the button and now I have made this gear to have just about the same dimensions as my page. Alright, let me give to it a fill color of something like so. Well, next thing I want to do is to convert this into a path. For the moment, it's not a path. If I click on this uh, Edit Paths by Notes uh, icon, you can see that I have no notes here because this is not a path. This is, this is still a shape, a parametric shape. So I need to convert this into a path. So I'm going to the Path menu over here and I'm selecting Object to Path. Now, if I click on this Edit by Notes button, you can see that now my shape, my, my gear my, has a lot of nodes. So, next thing I want to do is to add a rectangle here. And let me start by drawing my rectangle from here up to somewhere here. And I want to make sure that it snaps. You can see now, it snaps to the to the grid. When it snaps to the grid, I'm releasing the mouse and I want to turn this as well into a path. Now I'm selecting the gear object plus the rectangle shape here or path and I want to go to the path menu and select a boolean operation called difference. So now as you can see I have clipped in a way uh, my gear object through the use of the rectangle. Alright, now next thing I want to do is to go ahead and add a circle and I'm holding down control and I'm dragging. So here I have my circle and now I want to scale it up quite a bit but first I want to disable, deactivate the snapping so I can more easily rescale it and I'm holding it down control and shift while I'm I'm dragging and I'm scaling up quite a bit, something like so, my circle. Now I want to create a clone for the circle and the way for doing so, the shortcut for this is Ctrl D. So by hitting Ctrl D I have created yet another circle. I want to scale down this circle by hold, holding down always Ctrl Shift, somehow like so. And then I want Ctrl D, duplicate this circle, and I want to scale it down, this new circle now, somewhere here, and Ctrl D one more time, and scale down this copy or clone of my circle. Alright, now I want to uh, convert all those circles into paths. So, object to path, this one, Again, object to path, this circle over here, object to path, and this circle, convert this into a path. So I need now to select those two outermost circles by shift clicking, selecting both of them, and I want to go to the path and select difference. Now you can see we have this effect here, we have created this ring here and I want to repeat the same thing for those two inner circles. So I'm shift selecting both of them, go to the path menu and select difference. Alright, now I want to select this new path, this inner ring plus the outer ring and I want to select, uh, go to the path menu and select uh, combine or press ctrl K which is equivalent shortcut for that. Okay, now as you can see I have created this new path which is a, if I go to the edit uh, by notes uh, tool over here, you can see my new path, the notes and uh, all that, uh, those things here. So next thing I want to do is to add yet another rectangle here. And the reason for doing so is for making this rectangle to clip part of my rings here. Alright, so first I'm enabling the snap menu from over here and now I want to click, hold and drag a new rectangle. Alright, 
Now I'm going to select this rectangle plus the ring shape all right, behind and I want to go to the path and select difference. So now I have, I have clipped uh, also this part of my rings. Next thing I want to do is to select my, uh, my rings object plus the gear object and I want to go again once more to the path menu and select of course difference. So I have created this nice shape very very easily. Well, what about adding some circles like screws all around this circle, this ring rather. So I'm adding a new circle now and I am making it to have just the, sh I mean the size of let me try again, let me deactivate the snapping and I want to create a new circle by holding down control. Now, I want to bring the circle just exactly at the center of this of the bounding box of my gear object. How can I do this? Uh, well, I have first to go enable the snapping and then select this button over here that says snapping from and to senders of bounding boxes. Also, I want to deactivate from this grid, little grid icon over here, I want to deactivate for the moment the snap to grid option. So I'm moving around my little circle until, as you can see, it snaps to the midpoint of the bounded box. All right, now by pressing Alt-D, I want to create a clone of this little circle. I'm moving the clone somewhere here. Let me zoom in by hitting 3 on the numpad. And I want to place very, very precisely, as much as I can, of course, this little circle over here, somewhere here, in between those two uh, lines here. Okay. Now, let me press 5 so I can zoom out to my uh, page. And then I want to rotate this little circle, but relative to the center of the bounded box, to the midpoint of the bounded box of my gear object. So how can I do that? So very easily, I'm clicking once more, all right, and I'm, I'm, I'm switching over to the rotation and skew modes here. And you can see this little crosshair here, I'm moving it until, and I'm bringing it here, until it snaps to the bounding box midpoint. Now I can rotate, as you can see, my little circle uh, relative to the, uh, to the midpoint of the bounding box of the gear object. Let me undo really quick, really quick this. And now I want to create clones right, of, the, of this little circle by holding down, by pressing Alt-D, Alright, and by holding down control, I want to rotate them around the center, the midpoint, but this time by holding down control, I can snap them to equal angles. So, Alt D, making the clone, holding down control, and repeating this, the same procedure, the same steps, alright, until I have my circles you know, placed all around the gear object. All right, it's very easy to do, and it's very, very, very precise. Okay, so I'll do one more. Okay, and now I want to create yet another clone. This time I'm moving it somewhere here. I'll do, I'll do, hold it down, control and I am filling up all this circle, circular area, whatever, with those nice little circles. All right, now I can select, go ahead and select this uh, circle in the middle and let's go ahead and delete it. We don't need this anymore. So now, next thing I want to do is to make sure that I won't be selecting any of the gear, you know, this, this object here, the gear. 
So that's why I can press Control Shift O, and I can bring this little uh, you know panel over here, this little window. Let's rename uh, this object as Gear Object, as Gear Object, and I want to click on Lock. So I can I I now cannot select it or move it accidentally. So I'm going to be selecting all those little circles now and I want to make them a group of objects by selecting all of them first and then by clicking Ctrl G which is the shortcut for making them a group. Alright? So now I have made my circles, I have made my, my gear object, well, what, what about adding, adding some text now? And I'm going to be adding some text by using the text tool from this toolbar here. So I'm clicking on this text tool here, placing the cursor somewhere here and start uh, typing some text. It could be the preferred name for your logo, but in uh, for our tutorial I'm just going to be adding, uh, you know, my... Uh, my name, all right, just for having something as a text here. So this is my text. I'm selecting all of those uh, letters here by, by, by hitting Control A. And now I want to change the, uh, the font here. So I'm selecting from the drop down list over here in the text toolbar. I'm selecting something like a retro font something like, uh, I don't know, maybe this one. All right, and now I want to select my Select and Transform Objects tool, and I want, by holding always down Control, all right, I want to scale up this text here, and I want now to align this relative to the page, of course. So I'm going to the Alignment, Align and Distribute panel, and I'm clicking on those aligning uh, you know buttons center on vertical axis center on horizontal axis and now if i need to rescale it i'm holding down control shift as usual and i'm scaling it quite a bit so i have made this now if i wanted let's say to give it the same color as the gear all i had to do is to select this little uh, color picker this eyedropper here and I want to select this color, so I have, uh, you know, given to it the same color as the gear. Now, for the gear object, I want to remove the stroke, all right, the outline. So for this purpose, I'm bringing up by hitting uh, Control Shift F. This is the shortcut and the fill and stroke uh, menu, and I want to go to the stroke paint, and I want to remove the stroke paint for the for this object here of course it is locked i forgot that so i want to go to the object menu and i want to select unlock all now i can select it and i can remove the outline as you can see and i can do the very same thing uh, for those little circles all right so i have a more nicely looking logo next thing i want to add some you know some bending to the text here so for this purpose I'm selecting the text and now I'm going to be using the so-called uh, path effects so I'm clicking on the path menu and I'm selecting path effect editor here so uh, here I, I'm presented with the path effect editor and I want to apply a new effect something like envelope to my text but before that I need to convert my text because this is a text object for the moment. I need first to convert it into a path. So I'm going to the path menu and I'm selecting object to path. Now you can see I have the option to add a new path effect to my, uh, to my path, text path, whatever. So I'm uh, clicking on this drop down list and I'm selecting from the, from the pop up list envelope deformation. I'm hitting Add, alright, so now you can see the panel with the options for the top band, for the bottom band and things like that, enable top and bottom paths, left and right paths and things like that. So I'm selecting the 
top band path and I, I'm clicking on edit on canvas. Let's click on that. You can see now we have here a new path added on top of the text. Now you could see this uh, much better if I go over here to the view menu display mode and select outline. So we have no color, we, we have just the outlines of our objects and we can more you know easily work with them. So now I have this path consisted uh, of two nodes. I'm rubber band selecting those two nodes and then I go over here to the toolbar for the nodes uh, edit by nodes tool and I'm adding a new node in between. So insert a new node. I want now to select, click on this node and I want to click on make selected nodes auto smooth. So now I have a smooth node. I can click and drag and move it by holding down control All right somewhat and maybe that would be a nice idea I could disable deactivate the snapping for the, mo for the moment so I can more easily move my node alright so you can see something like so but we don't have to overdo so something like so. So I'm giving this nice envelope effect and of course I need now to go to the bottom band path. I need to click edit on canvas. Again I am presented with a, a new path. All right, You can see this at the lower part and I'm selecting rubber band selecting the, the two nodes, inserting a new node, selecting the new node, turn this new node, convert this into a, an auto smooth one and I need to select this node now, control, hold down control to constrain the, you know, the movement of the node. So let's move it a little bit upwards. Of course, you can play around with this. You can have infinite, almost infinite variations uh, of your uh, shape here through using the envelope effect. Okay, now I'm going back to view display mode, switching over to the normal mode. Uh, view mode and you can see the effect. Now uh, what about adding some text that flows uh, you know along this uh, circle here. So for this purpose I want to show you this as well. I need to add yet another new circle. Alright, hold down control so you are constraining the ellipse into uh, a circle and then for this new shape here, I want to go to the uh, to the fill and stroke, uh, you know, uh, menu, all right, and I want to set the stroke paint to something like flat color, and I want to uh, to delete to remove the fill because all I want for this is to serve as a guide for my curved text later on. The next thing I want to do is to hit Ctrl Shift A, go to the Align and Distribute uh, you know, uh, panel, hit on these two buttons as usual, uh, Center on Vertical, Center on Horizontal Axis. Now I want to select the Select and Transform tool and Ctrl Shift, hold down Ctrl Shift and click on this double headed arrow and scale up the circle, let's scale up the circle, uh, up to somewhere here that would be okay, Some, uh, something like so. Alright, now next thing I want to do is to add the text that is going to be uh, following the curvature right down here. Let me add a new text, let me, let's say something like, uh, I don't know, computer graphics uh, tutorials maybe, uh, computer graphics tutorials. Alright, and now I am selecting by hitting Ctrl A all the letters of my new text. I'm setting the font size to something like eight, uh, 16 or 18 or 20, I don't know, something like so. That depends upon your preferences, of course. And now I want to go ahead and select this circle here plus this text object here. And I want to go to the text menu and I want to put on path. 
you can see now that my object, my text object, if I zoom in it a little bit, you can see that it uh, it's it's following the the the, the, the circle. The, the curvature, but not the way we might want this to be. So the reason for that is that we need to first switch the direction of the of the path uh, of the, of the guiding guiding path. So first I need to convert the circle into a path, and then I want to go. If you want to see the the, the direction of your of your of your path, all you have to do is to go to the uh, to the file, uh, Inkscape preferences menu, and let me maximize this one. And you can, you want to uh, to check on this show path direction on outlines. So let me now close this Inkscape preferences. So if I switch over to the outline mode, all right, and I go to the uh, to the edit. Edit Paths by Nodes tool. You can see now those little arrows, this, those red arrows here, with, that signify that show the direction. So now all I need to do for my path is to switch uh, my direction, to reverse my direction. So I'm, I'm heading over to the Path menu and select Reverse. So now all I have to do is to select my circle, plus Shift select my uh, text object, and I want to go to the text menu and select put on path now you can see if i zoom in a little bit that my text is pointing at the at the right direction all right so now i want to rotate this text around always around the midpoint of the uh, of the bounding box of the gear object so now i want to enable the snapping here i want to select my text object all right, and I want to click once more, so I'm uh, I'm switching over to the rotation mode, and I want to enable the snapping at the uh, from end to centers of bounding boxes. This little button over here, okay, and I'm moving this little crosshair until it snaps to the bounding box of either the circle or the gear object. So now I want to rotate these computer graphics tutorials all right until you know i find the just the right position for it all right something like so so now you can see i have placed my uh, text here as well i'm switching over to the display mode uh, to the normal display mode and i want to go ahead select my circle object i want to control shift o this is a shortcut i want to hide it all right and i want to keep just the text and for the text i would probably uh, like to uh, to change the color to something like white all right and uh, you can see now we have this very very nice uh, text over here of course this is a very elementary uh, logo but I hoped that through this tutorial I, I showed you some of the very essentials of creating a logo. Of course, in a future tutorial I hope I can show you how you can turn this logo into something more interesting by adding effects. Like for example, I could select this gear object and go to the filters and add a bevel effect like a... Uh, maybe like a metal casting maybe? Right, you can see something like so, or I could uh, like uh, I don't know bright metal. You can see the different effects you can very easily give, and you can make your logo even more interesting, right? But this is for a uh, for for a future for the next tutorial. For the moment, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something from this. And if you like this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time with a hopefully interesting topic. Hopefully soon. Until then, have fun and goodbye.